Hi, my name is Eva. And move on to the next slide. So Sophia asked me whether I would present in this event. And at the time that when I was thinking about what I would want to share, if I were to share anything with anybody, this is the title that came to my mind. That if any of us want to go on a journey of our own, there's no point of asking people permission or staying in line. That if you want to do it, build the rocket and go on with it. Have the most amazing journey of your life. So as you guys have heard from many of the speakers before, that when we reflect the career path that we have had up to this point, a lot of us will pop, in, myself included, when, we look, when I look at the career path I've had up to this point, it's not a linear, linear progression or even a straight line. In fact, when I think about it, it's very much like you know, how, how kids play in the playground, zigzag fashion, that just have to go through it and from there gradually you figure out what your next job would be or next, ne next job would be. So my journey started out in engineering as a MIT graduate in computer science, it was a foregone conclusion that I was going to go into engineering. Like everybody in engineering, of course, you're going to go into engineering. So I started out my career in engineering as, as well. Spent a couple years building really cool stuff, having a lot of fun. Yet, after two years or even during that process, I had this longing. I wanted to see how my stuff, how the stuff that I was building would be used in the real world. So with that longing, I pursue it, switch over to the consulting side, and that's why I met Sophia. I was doing the dot, dot com days, year 2000, that we leveraged the application server of our company to power a lot of amazing internet sites, American Airlines, Intel, and Walmart. In fact, just a month, uh, a week before I was to get married, June 2000, that Walmart was also planning to launch their first e-commerce site ever during the holiday season. Yet they ran into a lot of problems. Performance was not what they expected. Back in the early days, people you know, were not proficient in terms of building a lot of e-commerce sites. They exhausted all the experts they could send to Walmart. Walmart continued to escalate, escalate, and escalate. Then they finally came to me and said, we knew that you're going to get married next week, next week, yet we have nobody else that, could, that we could send to Walmart. It's up to you. <laughs> Sophia is not in fact there. And then also, I don't know whether you guys realize it, Walmart's headquarters are in Arkansas, a very, very conservative area. So I flew into Arkansas. The next day, I woke up at 4 AM, went into the Walmart office, started to figure out what was going on. Two hours later, I was scheduled to meet with their CIO to actually give the person a summary of what was going on, how to fix the site, presented this comprehensive plan. Because the pressure was that if we didn't fix it, they were going to dump us, go for something else. So after my presentation, the CIO was happy enough with the plan to the point that he then called up the CI CEO of my company and said, could you convince Eva to push back her wedding or not go ahead with it? <laughs> I did not do that. I went ahead to get married. 15 years later, I'm still happily married. <laughs> but through that experience, you know, oftentimes, Sophia and I will send in last minute to fix escalations and escalations. So after a couple years, I decided to hell with it. I'm going to see if I move to the other side of the house on the ITN. I'm going to show the world how anybody could manage a project from beginning to end on budget, on scope, without any escalation. So with that, I took the jump to IT. And during my four or five years in IT, I released a patented website and also built data center from scratch for BEA Systems. BEA Systems was acquired by Oracle for $8 billion in 2008. Had a lot of fun in IT, did exactly what I wanted. Then another longing of me came about. I felt that I was an actress in a movie. 
that I could build stuff really well, and I knew I could do it over and over again. Yet I wasn't satisfied just to be an actress in somebody else's movie. I wanted to be a director. I wanted to direct how the movie was made from beginning to end. So with that, what I did is I took the chance to transition from the technical side to the business side. It was not an easy move because I have never been on the business side, yet I was able to leverage the network I had, make the jump over there. Then in marketing, marketing ops, the first thing I saw, this thing puzzled me all the time, right? Marketing oftentimes say there are certain job titles we wanted to target, that if a lead comes in with a VP title, CEO, executive, or whatever it is, you need to actually score it highly and push over to sales. Or if this person is to attend a certain event, webinar, or whatever it is, you should also lead a score high and push over to the side. As an engineer, I always wonder, how do you know that, right? How do you actually assign a specific score to the particular attribute, profile attribute, or even the interaction attribute to make it scientific? So what I did was that in B2B, I didn't know it at the time. In B2B industry, apparently nobody was doing it that way then. What I did was that I hired two data engineers that had never done this before because nobody was doing big data analysis in marketing. So I hired two engineers and we come, come through millions and millions of records. I was at Citrix, a Fortune 500 company at the time. So we combed through millions and millions of records to, a, to be able, and did a lot of regression analysis to be able to assign a scientific score to particular attribute and activity. Based on the f findings, I then announced to our salespeople that I could, two things you choose, I could cut down the volume that I passed from marketing to sales by half, and I would personally guarantee that you will still have the same pipeline. Because based on the new algorithm I did and simulation, that I am so confident in the big data that you know could just do it a lot more efficiently, I will guarantee the same pipeline. Alternatively, if you do not want to cut your staff because you wanted to continue to deal with the same volume of inbound calls and all that, I could do that and I will guarantee that your conversion rate in terms of the bookings pipeline will increase by 40%. We put it into production, did all A-B testing, and half a year later, it turned out to be exactly what we predicted. And uh, with all that, the surprising thing, you know, I did not realize anybody was doing that. The surprising thing was that with the big data analysis that a lot of awards recognition came by, and that's when I actually went to our CMO, who never realized I was doing this in the first place, said that, well, we happened to get this amazing award, and we got invited to be a keynote speaker in this amazing conference in front of 2,000 people. Would you like to be up on the stage with me? So that's when he realized for the first time that we were doing this at Citrix. And uh, funny thing is that later on, somebody was going to compile use cases of all the revenue marketers, so they interviewed me. Didn't I, this is not my intent. I did not intend to come across arrogant or anything, but to the person, the interviewer, I said, as an engineer, I really don't see how anybody would do it otherwise. This is the most straightforward, the most scientific thing that anybody would want to do. So that was my journey on the marketing and business operations. In terms of the last lake, the current journey I'm on, I made that transition about uh, three months ago in June, this digital business. And the inspiration came from the fact that, you know, using the movie analogy, actress, director, I actually now want to be a producer. <laughs> I wanted to own the entire thing from beginning to end. Inspiration came from that, I'm so used to shopping, doing things online. In the B2C world, right, you do everything online. In fact, going to the physical store, Target, is a very unsettling, disorienting experience for me. The fact that I have to locate the department, sort through the colors, sort through the sizes, is so inefficient. <laughs> so the company I'm in right now, we focus on data center security for highly regulated industries, financial services, e-commerce, 
and uh, healthcare. A lot of security solutions up in the market so far has been appliance-based. So that means that the sales cycle has always been that the sales team will go in, plans, trends, and automobiles. Lots, lots of personal touches to convince, do a lot of dog and pony shows, talk you so much in the UN that they convince you to try their product. Yet, for somebody that's so used to the convenience of B2C shopping, I truly believe that we have to move to the next level. B2B can be exactly like what B2C. People demand that kind of experience. So I wanted to push for this digital route that our product will be downloadable, you know, model that people can not only self-educate, self-qualify, but also go through the trial experience and from there, they will decide when they want to engage with sales team. Fundamentally, it's a shift that we deeply respect our users, we respect their intelligence, respect their ability to make decisions for themselves. So that's what we uh, launched the digital route two months ago. And I remember at the time of the launch, my CEO, my boss came to me and said, Eva, you have two choices. You've been doing business operations for a long time. You are good at it, I know. So you can continue to hold on that title because that's what you have been doing, job security. Or another option is that since you are so fascinated about this digital route, you could actually shift your, business, your title to digital business and this is what the focus is gonna be. I thought about it, not very much. Within an hour, I went to him and said, you know what, I'm going to take this digital business. Then my team came to me and said, how do you know it's going to work out, right? In the industry, everybody is doing this whole heavy self-centric thing. How do you know the digital route will work out? And I told him, it doesn't really matter to me whether it works out or not, because this is the only thing I want to do in my life right now with my career. So success or failure, it doesn't matter to me, because if I feel passionate about something, and it doesn't matter what the end result will be, the journey itself is worth it. So a couple things that I say and I think about all the time is that the current job is not a job. Again, you know, I get anxious all the time. I feel that it's not a job, but it's actually preparation for your next job, in some cases is, if, is even your next, next job. In the case of transitioning from field to field, oftentimes because that new field you want to do is foreign to you, so you will have to sometimes take a step back. It's almost like that, you reach the height of your career in that field, then you say, well, you wanted to go on to a different journey or go on to a different field. You have to make a lateral transfer relying on your network, sometimes take a step back in terms of responsibilities or knowledge or anything like that. It could be a rather unsettling experience. So the journey always like, to me anyway, goes like that and it dips back a little bit. And it's very, very scary, right? Thinking about, well, I've gone so far, I've devoted so much energy into it, do I wanna do this? Yet every single time I find out that if I stick with it, I will actually reach a new peak. And from there, go down again, and then I will transform and reach another peak. So, and another thing is, you know, I keep on thinking about is that, what's the ideal job? Thinking that, wouldn't it be great? When I was in my teenage years or in college, I knew what my ideal job would be. I remember this analogy or this story, you know, till this day that I read a story that this person had a lot of pancakes because he was hungry. So he eat one pancake, two pancakes, and all that go on and go on. And then when the person gets to the seventh pancake, he's finally full. So then he was saying, had I known that by eating the seventh pancake, I would be full, I could just skip all the previous six pancakes and just pick on the seventh and I will be all done. Life is not that, that though. I think a lot of times in terms of ideal job, how do you know what your ideal job would be? I reflect back in terms of when I was in college. I think the most I could have was a high level sketch in terms of what I wanted to do. And I could assess my skill set knowing what my core strength would be. But then in terms of the detail 
picture, it will not become a lot more clear until time, mentorship, the network of mentorship, and then you know, iteration will come in. Every single time as I go through the job, accumulate more experience and context, it actually allow me to color in that sketch, sketch even more. And a lot of times I will reiterate, come out with different sketch. And that's how, for me, how I actually will get to the ideal job. And another thing, interesting thing about mentorship, Sophia talked about it, it's very important to have a network of mentors. I cannot agree more, agree with that more. And interesting about mentorship is that it's like a two-way street, right? Like you have a mentor, you have all the mentors that you have. Tim, my uh, CEO, said that to me. Early in his career, he actually said, I wanted to be a CEO someday. So what he did is that he assembled a list of very impressed CEOs or people at a high level that could help and mentor him. He will meet them on a monthly basis. And he, instead of expecting it to be a two-way, uh, one-way street, before each meeting, he will study up on everything relevant to that person's job and industry. So then he will go into the meeting with recommendations and questions and have a very stimulating discussions. Otherwise, he said to me, and I agree, it will sometimes feel like a tax the person had to pay. So that's what he wanted to do. And I was like, that's a good idea. Always provide, provide value, add value in everything you do. So for me, you know, as I go through the career transformation, I keep on thinking about what's my core strength. I will have to say that if I could have one superpower, whatever superpower that would be, would be ability to see the future. I'm fascinated by the future. I look at little kids and I wonder, and I wanted to see what their future would be like if they continue that particular path of the attributes or behavior they have. Even today, you know, every day I interview people, dad, and I know Myers-Briggs, and doing the interview, I'm fascinated in trying to figure out what the personality type that person is, and if they are to continue using this trajectory or attributes, what their career will look like 10 or five or 10 years from now. So to me, data, analyzing data, seeing the future, is something that I enjoy doing, and I happen to be good at. So I read, it on, I read on LinkedIn, this is like, for, for me, the great representation of ideal job. It's an intersection of three circles. In some way, you know, it's a really interesting way to look at it. If you only have two and missing the third, it's never that ideal. So take, you know, an example. If you are enjoying what you are doing and you are good at it, yet the company does not need that, what would that be? That will make you very happy, but poor. <laughs> Company does not need it. And another way to look at it is that if you are good at it, and then the company needs it, but you don't enjoy what you are doing, what would that be? It's almost like at the end of every single field I was in, I felt that way. I would be rich, but bored. And then, the third one, if you, are in, if you enjoy what you are doing and, and that's what the company needs, but yeah, you are not good at it, it's just a dream. <laughs> so when I think about it, this is really I couldn't do any better than this, just what the ideal job would be. So then moving on to a few guiding principles I have. So in terms of guiding principle I have for myself, I tell myself this all the time. Always, always work myself out of my current job. In fact, whatever I'm doing, I wake up every day and I wanted to see the future. And I think about if I'm two or three years from now and I want to leave my current job. If I'm to leave my current job at that time and my, my team or whatever company I have absolutely cannot do it without me, I have failed myself and I have failed my job. So every single day I figure out how can I actually get on this journey so I can work myself out of my current job. And this is critical because if I have this mindset, 
I will continue to push the envelope. I will continue to innovate. I will continue to go for a bigger, bigger pie with a lot of responsibility, interesting assignments for people around me and people on my team. Another way to look at it is that if I don't push the envelope and continue to advance, at some point, I'm going to become a roadblock of somebody on my team who wants to advance and innovate. So to my team, and I say this to my team all the time when they start out, in the tech industry, we all know acquisitions happen, things move all the time. A lot of companies that were once hot probably 10 years ago, 20 years ago, are no longer around. BEA, the company I was with, got acquired 2008, right? So I will tell my team, forget about it. I cannot guarantee you job security. It's never going to be there. That's just accepted. What I will guarantee you as your manager is that I will do my very best to make you more marketable and qualified for your ideal job. And that's my promise to you. So for business, this is how I look at business. It's not so much you're trying to figure out what you want. Does it make sense to figure out, oh, I want more pipeline, I want more bookings. Things come naturally. Figure out what other people want and focus on that. Miraculously, through that process, you will get what you want. For product, for digital business, for distribution, for innovation. Trying to figure out what other people want and do it, things will follow naturally the same way with business, same way with marketing, same way with product and technology. So a uh, couple other things. I got asked this a lot. People ask me, how did you achieve work-life balance? Or better yet, I say, do you have work-life balance? Right now, I, uh, about a year and a half ago, I left Citrix, Fortune 500 company, my rich but poor job I had. And I joined this startup, you know, employee number 20. Now we are about 100. So life is extremely busy. It's exhilarating but exhausting all at the same time. Meanwhile, I have two little ones, you know, age four, seven and four little girls. So people constantly ask me, like, do you have any work-life balance or how do you have it? My answer to them is that forget about work-life balance. Today, with the digital route, with everything, you should think about work-life integration. Work is part of life. Just because you can access mobile all the time, you have everything at your fingertips. Work is part of your life. And same thing, vice versa, life is part of work. So you have to figure out the best way, tap into support network, tap into whatever, so then you can achieve that integration to allow you to do whatever you need. And another guiding principle I have is related to my husband, partner. I remember in my teenage years, I had this plan, only for a short while, that I was going to study really well, and maybe I will marry well too. So if I'm marrying well, maybe one day my husband or partner will make it. And from there, I will just go along for the ride. I will not have to do a lot of work anymore. That plan did not last very long, because after a while I realized I have so much to offer, so much to say to the world, and I don't want to be a supporting cast in anybody else's life. I want it to be the main character of my life. So with that, I went through the same dating journey trying out different profiles, and I was really glad that by the time I settled down, I actually figured this out, that I wanted to be the main character of my own life. So with that, I found a partner who appreciates what I have to offer to the world and supports me in everything I do, not only in words, but also in actions. So I said this all the time, you know, uh, when people interview me or ask me questions, one of the best decisions I have ever made, made in, uh, made in li my life is actually finding the husband I have who actually will be a truly equal partner of, uh, of, of mine. So this is the last slide, my last guiding principle. And this is a picture of one of my daughters taken by the event photographer, Kelly. Kelly is my coworker, and she also does the amazing visual of the presentation. 
So uh, it's her holding the drone on her hand. Every single day, one of the happiest moments I have is that, you know, they go to, they, they will be uh, at night, I will go to their bed with them sound asleep in their beds, right? And I look at their very peaceful faces. And then that's when I will tell myself that I'm going to do better. I'm going to try my hardest to lean in for a better world. No, this world is not easy, but I'm going to do my very best to lean in for a better future. And I'm going to pursue the dream the hardest I can. I don't, need, I don't need to live life through them. I'm going to live life of my own. And I hope by doing that, they could draw inspirations from my actions and carve out a path of their own. Thank you. <laughs>